Which one? Which camera are we looking at? Hello, everybody, and welcome to our live stream here on Twitch's YouTube, live from Saint Petersburg. I uh, probably expected to get the updates stream that we usually do on the date when we have the update, but we have a very special occasion, and we wanted to use it because we currently have the CC Summit here in Saint Petersburg. With over 35 uh, contributors from all across the globe invited here um, for the past two days. As you can imagine, we have a lot of topics that we talked about. Fortunately, most of them are under NDA, so we have to wait a bit until we get all the juicy information. But we wanted to take the chance to actually have a Q&A session uh, because the contributors have prepared questions from their communities and we have the chance to actually ask them to our developers. We're going to answer them on the stream. Um, I will be here um, sitting on the PC um, looking at chat um, answering your questions, but I just wanted to make clear that the questions today are going to be from contributors and it's not a chat Q&A session. So we can still ask questions related to a topic and we'll maybe try to get them somehow answered later on, but the focus is clearly on this. And with this, I'm going to hand over to uh, our developers and our contributors, uh, Sabak Tevin. Hey guys, I'm Sabak Tevin, name's Phil. Happy to see you and happy to see you as well for two days already. Uh, just a short introduction of myself. I'm currently a live producer of all the warships. That means that uh, I'm responsible for community strategy in our game, of interacting with uh, hardcore audience, especially on some really important matters about the game. And I also am happy to uh, basically be the responsible for community contributors program in general. And here I'm accompanied by my friend and colleague Ivan. Yeah, hi guys. Uh, my name is Ivan Komarov and I'm a balance team lead here in World of Warships. So you can probably guess what I'm making. And this is ship balancing uh, and uh, balancing on like new mechanics, say carriers uh, or reworks like radar or... Everything exciting to find an engagement comes from this man. <laughs> So guys, uh, because because this is a stream of our official channel and some of our audience may not know you yet, can you please introduce yourself one by one, starting from you? Absolutely. Um, hi, Warshippers. My name is uh, C-Ranker. I'm a CC on the uh, NA server. Uh, I do my work mostly on YouTube and Twitch. You may have seen me on uh, some of the King of the Sea broadcasts on NA if you watch any competitive stuff that we do on Twitch. And uh, it's been a great two days, and I'm uh, glad to be here. Hello, uh, I'm iChase uh, of the YouTube channel iChase Gaming. I'm a North American community contributor. And uh, yeah, it's been fun being here for a couple of days now and uh, you know, ask some good questions today. Okay. Hello, so I guess not many of uh, many people know me, but uh, I'm your cat. I'm uh, actually playing in some EU server and I'm a contributor on EU server. But my content is mm, mainly uh, Chinese thing, so it's like a, a link between white and this. So I'm glad to be here. They don't even like it. Hello, hello. I am Plumble, uh, and I'm a huge CC. And you probably either know me from YouTube or from Twitch, where these days I spend a lot more time. I'm not sure if you can see me through Yeah, sure. So uh, I'm really happy to hear your questions. And guys, sorry, maybe all of us look a bit tired because we had really <laughs> two, two, and like uh, casually talking, but we had really two rough days filled with information. And as Christian uh, Chrysantis told you, uh, our guests will be able to share a lot uh, more news next week when they're back to homes after the summit. And let's start with the questions from Plano. But honestly, I, I wanted to ask you a question first. Go on, go on. So who had Raider? <laughs> These days, not many people. Okay. Uh, I should start? Yes. Well, I'll start with a very simple and easy question. Um, aircraft carriers ended all service combat in World War II. How on earth do you expect to balance it in World of Warships when we've already seen the impact it's having on multiple dynamic builds? Kiel Kabarov's is gone, Planking Zhao is vulnerable, battleships positioning alone is vulnerable, you kind of have to blow up. How do you expect to balance something that ended service combat in World War II in what is, well, a simulation, more of an arcade simulation, but still? <laughs> <laughs> Philosophical level, uh, 
just as we balanced out the other three classes that uh, mm -hmm. we all were, like they didn't balance it out uh, them out on like, individual level. So individually, they would say the battleship was uh, only like, better than this destroyer. Or, like, like, uh, but they managed button. to balance them That's out in our game. And same goes for characters. We'll uh, try to ma uh, balance them out in our game. And uh, by like, making balance tweaks and mechanical tweaks. Uh, some of them, um, uh, which you like, already seen us do, like the Forsage uh, uh, nerf. <laughs> Your microphone was off. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the, the microphone was off. Thank you very much. The, the, qu the question of Flamma was so controversial. <laughs> <laughs> On live. <laughs> yes. Good job. Should, should I repeat the question? Since yeah, yeah, please repeat. Okay. Okay. I ask, considering uh, carriers embed all surface combat in World War II, and considering this is something in the simulation, and we're already seeing how constraining it is to gameplay, I mean, a lot of flanking builds are gone, things like heal combat doesn't really work, battleships have to position with the blob or they die, so how on earth does Wargaming expect to balance this class with the rest of the classes? while maintaining some sort of dynamic plan. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll try to continue. Yeah, um, using the tweaks, uh, we like generally we just work on uh, making the feeling of uh, like uh, the counterplay against the carriers uh, be more pronounced, like with the DPS change in 8.5 or like in the upcoming uh, changes to uh, more like uh, to, to DPS again, and the uh, priority sector work that uh, should uh, um, give more possibilities for a ship to uh, interact with the carrier, and they will feel better. <coughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, I want to add that obviously uh, with uh, like having big historical department uh, which consults us on uh, naval history, we do have to introduce a lot of game conventions because uh, things were not balanced in, in war at all. Uh, and for example, uh, this change with uh, actually battleship AP versus DD is completely unrealistic, right? Mm. Like why, of course, why, why would but you, needed. But needed for balance because destroyers should have the same like opportunities in terms of battle influence and we need to balance them. And if we ever, if we ever have to introduce uh, submarines, for example, we will have to uh, make a lot of conventions as well because submarines were not taking part in a big naval action like our game is. So our idea is that in terms of history, we try to be as good as possible in terms of models, like models, armor schemes, some uh, base parameters, but in terms of gameplay, we are always willing to make conventions uh, just for the sake of gameplay. Can I elaborate a bit? Or sure. Have to send it on? Uh, my question is how do you, how do you try to attempt to maintain some of the dynamic builds, some sort of flanking, so some sort of solo play, not blobbing, while at the same time making it possible for the carrier to also enjoy his game plan. Actually, we're thinking about uh, some uh, internal ideas uh, with uh, regards to spotting uh, and uh, how the uh, individual ship interacts with the carrier, as I said earlier. So I, I can't share a lot of details right now, mm -hmm. but uh, we're thinking about it. Yeah, and the, and the point is that, uh, uh, as we discussed, and as you guys know from this, uh, our guests next week, when they are allowed to share the information, uh, while we have a lot of important changes to AA, uh, we don't want to address the spotting simultaneously because it will have cumulative effect, and we don't quite sure of the consequences. So when we get the AA and counterplay in terms of shooting down playing and uh, like slowing down the carrier pressure, we probably will address spotting. And yeah, we... Uh, we do accept that meta changed, and some things probably uh, they will stay changed. Like for example, it will be it will be hard to disengage with low HP and survive now. Like it, it's just a fact. But we do want to like to to save some amount of flanking and unusual stuff, yeah, because we, we we value this part of gameplay, and we don't want it like, to to be gone forever. We think it's valuable. Yeah. Well, actually, I've heard really good things about the new AA change on 8.5, but since we're here, we haven't actually tested it. Oh, oh <laughs> it, it, he went to CVs first, so you know I gotta kind of go there too, right? Um, so with 8.5, and I've only managed to get one game with 8.5 so far, and I have sort of experienced the new AA changes. Um, 
you guys are very sort of persistent with this idea that there's continuous DPS and that this continuous DPS will almost always guarantee some planes shot down. So this could maybe be like even against the worst potato player that like, okay, if you make an attack on him, you're gonna lose one plane if you attack this ship or two planes if you attack this ship. Um, at which point am I as a player still playing the game with my skill, being able to mitigate things? Or at which point am I starting to have the game play me where the game just says, okay, every time you attack, you lose this much. And that means this percentage of your damage will go away. And then by the end of the game, I'm basically playing within the confines of a spreadsheet. So, um, so basically, <coughs> in uh, our game, there are a lot of situations where you have to trade your uh, resources, in which case it's health, to get some damage on the other guy. <coughs> so, and um, this also works for the carriers. Uh, and uh, maybe it will be more pronounced on the carriers because you will know uh, more uh, the stability of your uh, damage, uh, you know, the plane losses will be higher than uh, it, it was right now, but it's still skill dependent because there is also the flag uh, um, bubbles that damage your planes and you have to aid. There is also terrain that you can uh, use for your advantage or uh, there is some work against the priority sector thing. So. It's still a game about managing resources, basically, and yes, it will become more uh, like stable in this sense and more predictable, but it's still a game about uh, basically the same thing, All, as well as uh, you will need to drop, uh, you know, your skill will still be in dropping bombs and uh, making um, as much as you can with the resources that you're given. <coughs> uh, can I do like a very quick follow-up? Of course. Okay. So <laughs> always, 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 right? always. always. Um, never ending questions. Um, one of the things that I see a lot in the community when uh, a new patch rolls out, especially something like, let's say, 8.5, is that now suddenly, like, one group of players are really happy. Like, let's say, surface ships are suddenly happy because, hey, this works. But then you, you often immediately also hear sort of CV players going, what the hell was this change, right? So would... Would you guys have, I guess and this is more like sort of your train of thought, would you have sort of like contingencies in place that if you suddenly see like, you know, shifts in statistics that don't look good, that you're willing to like, let's say, hot fix or hot patch something in short periods of time rather than waiting a full patch cycle? Yes, uh, actually, if, if, you, if you allow me. Um, this was our concern, honestly, because as uh, I mentioned numerous times to everybody, uh, in terms of statistics, public test is not really reliable because of how people play and you never can achieve the same environment. So actually when we were discussing this uh, thing with 085, we even agreed with our like development leads that uh, we will have a spot for like inter-update inter patch, additional patch. If we really see some ships really struggling, dropping too much, we will be able to, to play with them. Do you have any more comments to this? Yeah, I'll just add a bit. <coughs> um, with the 8.5 also there's uh, some uh, small but I believe uh, significant uh, buff in terms of uh, comfort for a CV carrier uh, that gives you more opportunity to slow down uh, when you're flying. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, you can just press a button S and you will slow down more than you slowed uh, Slide, slide, slide boost for for engine boost in terms of slowing down, okay. which which actually allows you to turn around quicker, to do follow up shots quicker, and spend less time in DPS. It's not too big because we don't want to like defeat the purpose of yeah. the change, but it's kind of a bit of uh, okay. tweaking from the other side, and we'll see how how it will play out. Okay, yeah, that's I think a very good uh, thing for other people to know as well because. You know, like I said, community always sure. believes that you guys went like, you know, sledgehammer, and then, okay, we'll see what happens in well, like we do, a month's we, time, we do, right? We do, so have, we do have sledgehammer sometimes. Fantastic, yeah. yes. <laughs> okay. Does anyone else have carrier questions? Anybody else with carrier AA questions? Mm -hmm. No? Well, can I piggyback then while we're, while <laughs> we're, while we're on the subject? Um, a thing that I actually absolutely despise is the fact that AA gets destroyed, and it gets destroyed very, very easily. Uh, the reason, for example, if I'm playing some ship, I don't want to pick a fight with a conqueror who's shooting me. It's not because of his alpha damage or the fires he sets. It's because if I fight him for a minute, I'm down to no AA, AA. And then the carrier can just farm me, well, even easier. And also defensive AA has limited uh, consumables. 
especially on AI-focused ships, so I don't really want to use my defensive AI to help my team anymore. I want to use it to help myself, because if I use it to my teammates and I run out, whoopsie-daisy, I got no more defense left. So what is your response to the situation mm -hmm. where... Despite of us buffing the HP4 AI, I think, three times after CBA yeah. work or something? Yeah. Like uh, well, we buffed it uh, by three on times. Uh, the open beta uh, where we tested it and we already have seen this uh, as a problem, as well as we uh, added um, a charge for, a all, uh, for all defensive AI consumables uh, compared to pre-CBA work. Well, uh, it works like that. Uh, it, the ship uh, itself basically it becomes uh, less, uh, like I say, potent uh, in uh, the more the battle goes on. It applies both to consumables and uh, sometimes to um, torpedo tubes or to main battery guns, and this also applies to A. Um, this um, should be. Um, balanced out by the carrier losses that take place and because he as well um, losses planes and uh, he doesn't always regenerate as, lo uh, as much so he too gets um, like weaker uh, the more the battles go goes on that's basically the, the answer Okay, have you ever considered uh, healing charges or repairs having some sort of impact on recovering uh, some AA that's lost? The same way they can heal their planes and regenerate planes? Mm, actually, I think we thought about it, um, but at the time um, we uh, discarded it uh, because of the like, UI problems uh, <laughs> with the, with understanding what what's um, what's being regenerated and what's how being regenerated and what's not i guess it's an open it's question it's, yeah. it's, it's a possibility and we, we can come back to it okay i'll finally give up the mic unless oh. i ch oh, oh, yeah, oh yeah. no okay. there's one more just one more one small question but um, you'll, you'll have to give... Uh, uh, yes, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Just because it's a follow-on sort of AA question, okay. this is really because I've also seen this uh, brought up a lot and not much has been heard from uh, in terms of developer response. Uh, ships like Atlanta, which used to be very strong AA ships, um, because now the entire shift has been to uh, the flak DPS on those, uh, or the flak bursts on those ships, and they don't really have a lot of continuous DPS. They're not maybe as effective as they were before. Is there any uh, sort of ideas about maybe addressing that? I, I know I that it's your topic, but I, I, really, I really want to comment a bit because I had uh, several questions like this and I actually spent some time looking up statistics uh, for Atlanta specifically. Uh, well, first, first of all, you mentioned that like uh, flag is the biggest thing. DPS is fo follow. Is, is Actually, uh, not not necessarily true uh, right now. Okay. So the and and I know why you think this way because when we started uh, with CV rework, work, we had slightly different idea in terms of AA influence. We thought that f like DPS will be more like secondary uh, source of damage and a burst, a flag burst will be the main. But uh, with all the data and experience we had from live server we realized that no, like AA flag bursts are mostly a skill barrier you, because if you fly, uh, like in the, if they go in your face, you will have so, uh, big losses, but still good players will play around them mostly uh, and people learn fast. Yeah. So uh, we actually started to, we redistributed and if you remember the patch notes, we took some damage from flag and started to pour it into yeah. DPS to have more consistency. Uh, and that's the first part. And the second part, uh, last time I checked Atlanta, first of all, uh, most of the ships with which were really strong in AA, in terms of average uh, planes shot down, uh, of course they saw less carriers pre-rework, but relatively to everything else, yeah. they still are the strongest. And uh, like I have fun fact, if I remember correctly, Atlanta average uh, plane kill score is surpassed only by ships like Worcester and Minotaur. So like oh, she's... In terms of in terms of planes frags, yeah. she's the best of all tier seven cruisers, tier eight, tier nine. So only the best AA shi ships can surpass. And yeah, it's it's kind of it's kind of not the one hundred percent assurance that they these ships will not be uh, addressed. Yeah. But it doesn't look like they lost this AA power honestly. Okay. So now I'm very happy to 
give <laughs> word to our another <laughs> guest. <laughs> okay, so uh, I guess I will release you from CV Revolt questions. And uh, as, <laughs> uh, as Bam has mentioned, like Hapa and uh, Zhao, so how about the old ships? They, I think like Hapa and Zhao is nerfed very long ago because they kind of overperformance at that, po uh, that time point, but it's like two years or three years till now, and it's left untouched. So also same question goes to like Montana. <laughs> yeah, so Ivan, let's, let's please, please buff Khabarovsk and say that it was community contributors idea. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice idea, I like it. I like Good plan. <laughs> well, seriously, it's obviously your question. So, yeah, I mean, like, <coughs> yeah, uh, we, we how, long, how long you read, how often you review those ships' performance? Basically, you're talking about power creeping the older ships. Yeah. Uh, well, we I guess we review them like monthly. Uh, like uh, we like uh, look at the statistics and the feedbacks, and you've s probably seen that we buff the Henry. Oh. Buff nerfed. Buff nerfed. That was um, also yeah part of the answer because like uh, almost a year ago we buffed Henry because it was an old ship and it didn't had it had its role and uh, now we're a bit uh, moving it uh, down a notch and as well as buffing the Hindenburg back, yeah. buffing back. back. Two times. <coughs> and we buffed Zhao by the torpedoes. Yeah, also we, like, a year ago we buffed the Zhao by giving it a uh, good 12 kilometer torpedoes, which actually fitted the gameplay uh, style of Zhao quite good. So, like, we are always looking at the old ships as well as the new ships. Uh, but it just, I, I guess it kind of ha happened that uh, some ships are just in a good place right now, like Kabarovsk. Uh, it, it, it's, it, it's, a, it's a ship that has its very unique and own role, and uh, it fits with the players they, who play it, and it's a good ship. And it has uh, distinct weaknesses as well. Yes. And honestly, yes, yes. buffing Kabarovsk would be weird right now. Even if it feels underwhelming, it's still good, like in terms of uh, what we see. And yeah, we, we're not really fans of over buffing tier 10s yeah. okay. if they're already good. So maybe a small follow-up that uh, how about Montana? It's it's very hot discussed in I mean Chinese community that Montana is underpowered compared to the especially newly. But do, do the guys play uh, the same uh, version of the game or the other one? Because <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no, I'm, I mean no, no, I'm, not, I'm not kidding because an hour version of the game like Montana is probably one of the most reliable and strong battleships. Yeah, like for, for, for my I opinion, it's like uh, it's a like all rounder, but uh, they are mostly argue about the guns. So it's it's slow flying shells and the penetration they, they, is not. They are slow firing, yes. And the penetration is not so good. Mm. And they can't take like the accuracy uh, upgrade with the dispersion accurate at the same time. So that's bring some. Yeah, but then the Montana has uh, a good Sigma, uh, 12 guns, and they still hit hard. They. The penetration is not always uh, a good thing in our game uh, because uh, sometimes it leads to over penetrations or something like that. Because um, Montana is a is is really a good uh, cruiser killer because of its kind of slow shells, uh, a huge alpha damage, uh, and it's still in this role when you have this uh, ship with a huge alpha potential, basically, and yet. I guess it's still the most out of the all uh, tier 10 battleships. So, I mean and uh, as well as obviously in this meta where we have uh, more carriers, the AA focus of Montana, it's, it still has a good AA, so it kind of comes together quite well. Also, I think, I mean, from my experience, because I love this battleship, she can uh, angle, it's really understandable how to, how to mitigate damage in her, you can angle, and I think Montana has it's just a small fact, but I really like the legendary mod for Montana. So overall, like, it's just very reliable ship. Yeah. Maybe it's not the best in every category, but I mean. It's an overall good ship. You can play it like any day of the week and any way come. Okay, I think that answers them. Okay, <laughs> so finally see you after. <laughs> Your time has come. I'm so glad you're buffing Hindenburg, by the way. Thank you. Just appreciate that. <laughs> um, um, we just need a minute to uh, fix a small issue with the microphone, so I'll just uh, be here for you for a minute. And <coughs> 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 <coughs>
German battleships. I actually find all these questions because I really, I really uh, moan and beg for these buffs just because I like them so much. But uh, yeah, I'm not going to ask you a question because I'm not here to ask questions. But guys, for the future streams, ask him about German battleships. G German battleships like Hindenburg, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. Um, so what was your question? Okay, so um, I'm, we just finished up season 12, I think, of Ranked Battles. Um, and ranked is a very kind of rage-inducing thing amongst a lot of the player base. Um, you're, it's touted as a competitive mode, but you're forced to queue up solo, and then you get a randomly assigned team, and you're only rewarded based on the performance of, of the team that you kind of have no real control over. It, this has always felt to me like there's a giant disparity here, and I'm kind of curious if the, you guys... Kind of one question is kind of what's your vision for ranked and and two if you have any plans at all to kind of maybe kind of try and reconcile that apparent disparity like we've done a little bit in the rank sprint seasons with allowing you to take a div mate in. Yeah, I mean I can probably address this. So our vision for rank because the rank battles is very ancient addition to the game. It, it, it has been here for several years. Uh, our vision has changed a bit. Because back then, we, when we introduced ranked battles, we treated them as probably the most hardcore type of gameplay you can have, like really competitive. But since then, we had, like, apart from community tournaments, we had clan battles. And uh, with each iteration, our vision slightly shifted. Right now, we view ranked battles as very established mode. Like, I know they have some, you may have some questions about rentals, about carriers in ranked, and these are the separate questions. Because the rank battle arms race, we had it as well. Some experiments are successful, some are not. Anyways, the mode itself, we see it as a step to competitive gameplay because the real competitive gameplay is Clan Wars, where only you and your team are responsible for, for everything. You cannot like blame teammates. Well, you can, but it will be your teammates which you <laughs> picked yourself. So exactly. it's like, like you're responsible as a team. In ranked, it's still more of random battles with ranking system, which kind of gives you some progression and tries to match you with players of more equal skill, but it has some caveats like uh, star saving mechanics and so on and so forth. But it works. It works like this. It has audience, which is really stable. It's uh, not like decreasing or, and people still play this mode in, even despite of this rage. So like we don't, we don't want to really change the, the whole core of ranked battles because we have clan battles, we have ranked sprints. Now we'll have clan blitz, I think, or brawl, how we call it. Well, the mini, mini clan wars we announced. So this mode probably at core it will stay. We may experiment, we may tweak it, we may like get rid of some ideas, but at core it will stay as it is. I want to ask a quick follow because you mentioned arms race, which we had in season eleven, which originally I was not sold on, but absolutely fell in love with the more I played it. Do you guys consider the arms race experiment and ranked a success, and is there potential for that to come back? 
Well, none of us uh, is responsible for maps and modes directly. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. But uh, like we, uh, from what I heard, and I'm just going to give you just like that, like yes, ranked uh, arms race was relatively good. Okay. But on the yeah. same topic, like, um, do you think it's uh, arms race also good for clan wars? I'm not sure right now. Like, <laughs> again, um, clan season with arm race confirmed. <laughs> yeah, no, but it should be fun. It should be fun. Um, you mentioned that there's a lot of griping about ranked, but the player numbers have stayed the same. Aren't you worried that it's because of the rewards, the steel? It's yeah. All, yeah, it's all these lucrative it's ships it's coming it's out it's and it's always, the rewards it's the that's keeping people there. That's that's valid point. It's always the question uh, how to interpret this because like we have good rewards there. But like we see, we compare seasons with each other. We compare the whole thing. We compare how much players stick. We don't believe that people will endure enormous, enormous pain just to get uh, to like middle ranks to earn some steel. But uh, obviously, feedback on ranked is really important. For example, we see this all this uh, questionable, like all this controversy around ra uh, around rentals. We see a controversy around uh, carriers being very good at saving star because of the XP they accumulate, and we're not going to dismiss this. So obviously, this will be worked on. But overall, honestly, I don't. I'm not a big competitive player, for example. But I don't have uh, any. Like, I don't remember any game where ranked system didn't cause me to rage. Honestly, I think the kind of raging because of you playing with random dudes. Like it's, it will always always be a thing in any any game mode, honestly. Questionable. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> 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 All right, I'm gonna go to uh, kind of an easier question, and it's also sort of, I guess, kind of been addressed in 8.5. Um, could you sort of discuss what's going on sort of under the hood with the port UI, like? You know, people have been griping about this, you know, this port UI that is laggy and it takes forever to load. And uh, at least from what I've been seeing today, like 8.5 somehow has magically like suddenly made it a little bit better. But, um, you know, like what's going on under the hood and why is it taking so long to address the port UI? I probably cannot answer yes next, so I will elaborate. Okay. <laughs> Just kidding. So uh, yes, this uh, is a priority for us. It's a problem. Uh, I will just give you, f well, first of all, the most important things Things here is that please check out update 085. Five, yeah. Our ge guests, they don't have this advantage because they're on Summit and they're busy with us, but uh, 085 does improve port uh, performance again. And I experienced this personally uh, yesterday night I played three hours of Rogue Wave uh, overnight. It was a questionable decision. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, I mean, when I had to equip all the ships, uh, like it, it's not well, really, like I just experienced this. Also, we uh, we updated the, uh, over the last several updates, we update the switching between ships. We update the tooltips. Uh, and we will keep doing this. But to give you more perspective, so uh, there are two, two lines of work here. Uh, with port. First of all, uh, it's optimizing the current code. It's mostly about optimizing the like internal uh, UI descriptions which a uh, client has to decode uh, just to make it shorter e and easier to interpret so everything works uh, faster. And this is one line of work. And another line of work is mostly about basically changing the whole technology under the hood uh, to allow better port UI. And this is very important because not only it will increase the performance more, it will allow us to finally uh, add some new port features because right now we kind of don't want to over uh, like any any new gimmicky interesting stuff we added to port can decrease the performance and when we uh, renew the uh, things under the hood will be will be given more freedom so we work on this right now uh, i th i'm pr pretty sure that uh, i hope that players will be uh, they will notice the performance increase right now in yeah. 085, but we also will keep working on un changing the under the hood thing. And uh, I cannot give you, uh, I cannot give you the update number, but it's being like in development. It's just a very big process because unfortunately we have a lot of legacy things to just we need to make from the scratch. 
Yeah. Come inside. There's a lot of players when they yeah. think port UI optimization, they think you guys just like, you know, I don't know, go into code and adjust some va variables and ta-da, you know, you no, no, port I, UI. I mean, oh, it's I mean, like it's, it's, it's <laughs> plug, <laughs> not plug. <laughs> <laughs> just switch. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I still want to be serious here. I know that yeah. it was like our technical debt. I, I really, I'm really sorry for not uh, addressing it earlier, but like, I just want to highlight that we made good progress over the last few months and we will keep on doing this. Okay, thank you. All right, who wants the mic? Uh, uh, okay. Who had who had Mike? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so awkward handoff. <laughs> okay. Uh, another easy question, I think, because uh, I think actually people love playing like scenarios. Maybe not that much, but because it's beneficial. And uh, so now a lot of uh, scenarios going down, being shut down. Maybe due to CV rework or something. But are you considering because we see there is hard mode, or also it, the, it, the placeholder is already there? And how is that going? Probably need to remove this uh, placeholder, right? <laughs> yeah, makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, another bad joke for me, but uh, to be serious. So uh, right now, uh, it's not about rework because rework were done, was done mostly by different people. It's more about focus of the team which does maps and modes. So we want to, uh, and we already switched most of their resources to uh, ex experimenting and trying to enhance the experience for main PvP. And uh, that doesn't mean that we don't want to address operations. Like it's a valuable part of our game, but the, like we should just honestly accept that the main game is PvP, and uh, we have this uh, temporary modes, which not just for fun. We like want to test some ideas there, and we will try to introduce some more modes to enhance the random experience and some new maps. So for now, uh, operations are not in priority. We can do something like. Uh, bring back some of them, some tweaking, but not dr nothing dramatic so far. Okay. Anyway? Yeah, bro. All right, so let's talk real briefly about legendary upgrades. Dun, dun, dun. When these were added to the game, some of them were very valuable, highly coveted, and some of them were kind of so-so, and some of them were kind of not really good at all, depending on what ship you were talking about. And of course, now we're at a point where we've added whole ship lines since the module, the upgrades became available. They don't have those available. They've been removed from carriers. Kind of, where is this whole system going in the end? Like, what's the, is it, is it going to stay? Is it going to go? Are we going to eventually refresh it? What, give us some, share with us what we, what you can about what the plan is. Initially, really? Yeah, of course. In, initially, if you want more details, you can always just slap me. <laughs> uh, so initially, the idea of legendary upgrades was just an, like take on uh, how can we make ship customization or introduce some meaningful progression for players. Uh, and right now we're up to something else. Mm -hmm. uh, so we do not, con we don't spend resources on making new ones. And uh, quite shortly we will like announce it. Uh, and then uh, if this new system is successfully implemented, uh, then we'll have to decide what to do, what and how and when to do with legend upgrades. To continue them, to like leave them as it, as they are, like a, a legacy thing. Because they're, like we have we have an interesting upgrade, I think, for several low tier Japanese cruisers. We, like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. The aiming system yeah. yeah. mod zero, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. mod zero. Well, maybe we totally can balanced. Yeah, <laughs> maybe we can <laughs> leave them or discontinue them or I don't know. So we really don't know yet, but. Uh, we are working on something in the same area, but not connected with upgrades, and we'll tell you shortly. Okay. Next. I can. Yes. Okay. Plum time. Right. Well, recently we've had. Well, it started with very few high tier premiums, and now recently we've had what Azuma, Georgia, and now we're seeing in testing we're seeing Yoshino, Summers, Smolens, Kolber, Slava and you announced Friesland, Siegfried, Hayate. The pace, oh, of, the pace of high tier premiums seems to be just becoming insane. Like it's only high tier, it's this insane flood of high tier premiums. Why? Where is it coming from? Do you think it's needed at high tier? It's already so high tier focused. First of all, I really love the fact that you have such good memory to pronounce and remember all these names. <laughs> <laughs> I personally, like, so sometimes I, like, oh, okay. Uh, and uh, second, please next time ask question, because I can direct to Ivan, because I'm, I'm tired of talking. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, uh, let's get the terminology first of all. Uh, premium ship 
uh, is like broad definition. So premium ship is usually the ship with additional uh, credit earnings, with the ability to mount any captains without the training and being sold. Uh, but now it's not that simple because we have uh, reward ships, which are kind of premium, but they're not sold for uh, doubloons or for money. We also have ships sold for free XP for coal in the uh, armory, and uh, not like they are all premiums in a way. But I think we soon we need to, to actually introduce some like d distinctive uh, UI to tell which is which because we have, for example, Salem, which is premium but not entirely premium it doesn't earn uh, it doesn't earn a whole lot more credits but still you can train captain on her for example this first part second part is that uh, even if you remember back then we introduced Missouri and Musashi uh, even at that time where we did have really not a lot of these ships uh, our core audience already progressed to high tiers uh, our game economy is rather soft and we have these fancy premium camouflages that mean, which means that compared to for example World of Tanks our players usually can consistently play on tier 10 without getting lower to farm credits and according to all of our research and information most of our audience honestly just wants to play on higher tiers and we're just trying to meet the demand here and uh, yeah I agree that recently we just had a lot of high tier ships in testing. Not all of them are going to be released uh, very soon. Not all of them are going to be released as premium for like, some of them will be reward ships. Also, I, I think it's still, it's still uh, valid that we have ships like Siroc or uh, Pell, Ark Royal, I think. Uh, what else in testing? Like s several, several like mid, mid tier ships. Uh, yeah, I think four of them. Bayard. Bayard, yeah. yeah so Yudachi. You dash it. You dash right. yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank Correct. you. <laughs> Thank you. Good memory. <laughs> <laughs> so, I say. So uh, while we do focus more on high tiers, we're meeting the demand mostly here, and I honestly don't see big problem here. I guess uh, power creep is kind of scary, because in order to sell to market these premiums, they have to have something special compared to the rest. It's it's always uh, very uh, challenging thing uh, when you make the ship uh, like better and Reddit says like it's it's insult to player base because it's so full of gimmicks and OP and then you try to make it balanced and Reddit says it's offensive, to, it's insulted to trust because why would I play it? Uh, I think that power creep is, qu is not a question of quantity of the ships, it's still a question of how well we interpret the data and balance them and uh, like from our la latest releases I don't know, I, I'm not sure we we did something OP? Yeah, we're trying to keep it uh, basically mm -hmm. in place. Um, and uh, But obviously there's, um, there are some problems with uh, designing a ship that feels unique at the same time and appeals to a new audience and as well as uh, making it balanced and uh, that's why there are some like um, more bright Concepts, and it's, it's not problem say. exclusive to premiums because uh, we need to market, as you said, uh, the ship lines as well. It's, yeah. it's the same problem. People, from the, on the one hand, people want healthy day, healthy game. On the other hand, people want to have like something fresh. On the even other hand, uh, we don't want, really don't want to release a line or a ship and then nerf it because it's like it's being it's being perceived as a bad decision. And uh, we, we are more fans of releasing something we reliable and then buffing it slightly. And I think our late, most of our, our latest releases, we didn't have to nerf anything really. So it's a valid concern, but we'll, we'll just try to do our best here. Okay, since you mentioned power creep, I have to ask, what's your opinion on New York? <laughs> it's a wonderful city. I've been there once. And <laughs> <laughs> Can I dodge it like this? <laughs> well, what's your opinion well, on New York? Seriously speaking, uh, to be serious, we, if I remember correctly, we buffed it not that long ago. We actually decreased the main battery uh, reload uh, and uh, time and uh, added uh, a better heal t uh, as a part of the whole branch, uh, getting better heal. Uh, talking about the, the heal, why Montana doesn't get it? The reason was uh, uh, at the time, uh, like the balance of like tier 10 battleships uh, 
um, is, uh, like, is very good in our opinion. And uh, they all had uh, the different play styles and they fitted their roles great and they were like super close in terms of uh, effectiveness. And thus we had to like d um, not include Montana in there because we were afraid that it would uh, skew the balance uh, of the tier 10 battleships. If I ever damage my brain and forgot your names, I will call you the memory man, the Montana main, the data scientist, and the dude whose question doesn't make me sweat. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Okay. Uh, here's another one of those questions again. All right. So in the past, we've had HE spamming ships that have smoke. And those ships are like Belfast. We still have them. Kudasov, and we still have them. And uh, the, the, the sort of consensus is like, this is not the world's best idea because it's pretty annoying to get shot at by something that can fire a, a lot of HE out of smoke. And you can kind of see this as well when you guys did Irian, right? You didn't give that one a smoke. You guys were like, yeah, that's probably not the best idea in the world. And now we have Smolensk. Like, guys, <laughs> how, <laughs> what, 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 what is this? Yeah, well, the Belfast also had radar so it's kind of uh, not uh, the Belfast's problem is not only in HE and uh, uh, the Belfast's smoke. problem is its existence <laughs> <laughs> that is also true <laughs> so if only someone had warned you do we hear uh, uh, do I hear a hashtag remove Belfast here <laughs> no <laughs> okay um, yeah um, we we believe that uh, for this concept uh, to be like alive um, like we had to make uh, Smolensk uh, have a uh, smoke because it's a super light cruiser. It's very lightly armored, and uh, it also has like the DD guns on it, but also has a citadel from a cruiser. So all the good things are in there, and um, and also we've seen like um, we've introduced Haruguma uh, and the whole branch from the Akazuki to the Haruguma, uh, which kind of fits uh, a similar play style and uh, in our opinion it, it was a good addition to the game um, so like with Smolensk we're kind of continuing this uh, idea but you have we have to keep in mind that it's just one ship and um, uh, it's not a branch uh, nor we like right now plan to add uh, some more uh, like branches like well, with uh, stealth uh, HE firing. But it's uh, like for one ship, it's a nice concept. It's a, it's a dangerous archetype, like we appreciate your concern, but uh, just, just so we understand that uh, we will from time to time try to explore some new archetypes and try maybe some, make some questionable uh, choices. Uh, we, need to, we need to do it not just, you know, it's not like marketing, uh, or sales because we can always introduce uh, yet another uh, like strong American, b American tier 8 battleship uh, looking at you Massachusetts. Anyways, <laughs> uh, I, I mean we, we, will, we will try some archetypes, uh, we will try to be careful, we will try to introduce them like probably in single ships. Yeah. If they, if they doesn't work or if we see that their influence is not healthy, we will try to keep them at minimum. If we see they, they are okay, then we can explore it further on. But yeah, thank you for warning and we, you can always blame us if Smolensk will be a failure. <laughs> so does that, uh, that is sort of a quick follow on, does that mean this is like one of those like quick buy this now guys before it goes away kind of thing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not sure, I'm sure what currency, I don't think we announced it yet. Yeah. I don't think we decided either. it yet but ah, okay. yeah you we have this nice tradition, uh, recent tradition of announcing the currency on DevBlog before the ship becomes available, yeah. and we'll try to do to keep doing this. Fun fact is that we really announce it when we actually decide. So we we keep it, we keep it uh, balancing separately, and then we start to think, okay, what what do we have in sales plan uh, on economy plan? How we can we market the ship? No, uh, like not uh, not none of the single uh, ships, uh, even. Any 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 crazy ship worth uh, ruining the game for a quick revenue because we've been around for four years. We plan to like be around for many years to come, and uh, if we go down this route, we will quick quickly run out of uh, uh, crazy archetypes. It it's not valid tactics. We may have done some mistakes in the past, but 
uh, yeah, it's not, it's not about that. It's just about exploring the archetype, seeing if it works, if it's still okay to play against, if it's still fun to play, maybe more ships will fall, and the audience who enjoys this type of gameplay will be more happy. That's it. Is this archetype the small gun spamming HE rapidly archetype, like Colbert as well is kind of in this category? Is that kind of the archetype you're testing here? Like with both Colbert and uh, Smolensk, we're exploring how we can uh, fit uh, this um, AA, uh, primarily AA-focused uh, light cruisers into high-tier gameplay mm. because it's obviously not so easy. Like, yeah, they have uh, this huge DPM, theoretical, but they do don't have the pen, nor the ballistics, but like, at least on Colbert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, uh, the ballistics uh, doesn't always support you from that side, and as well as they don't have the armor, they don't have the HP, and uh, that's like two different ways of how we can Gener fit, general, fit the idea. Generally, they are slightly different, but generally it's the same archetype, and uh, I think we mentioned it when we announced that on uh, some of the community streams. So yeah. We'll see uh, which one works better if they work at all. Okay, thank you. Uh, can I do a small follow-up? It's like because we mentioned about the. It's about Montana. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm going to bring you the American flag because uh, we mentioned like the super light cruisers like Smolensk and the uh, Colbert and uh, that remind me of that. I think once you mentioned that uh, the, the the relation between light cruisers and the uh, uh, yeah heavy cruisers should be like reworked, it's like now the light cruiser winning the DPM fight and the... We, we mentioned that we want to differentiate the light and heavy cruisers in some terms and there's still idea, it's still a thing, we're just working on it internally for now. Yep, I, that, I that, that's true. I guess uh, you'll hear more about like uh, testing uh, phase uh, in not that long time, but that's uh, what we can say right now. Dev, dev we, we, we still intend to uh, look at, it, at this uh, like whole uh, like ideas between the light cruisers and the differentiation between light cruisers and the heavy cruisers. Mm -hmm. we, we could have done it earlier, but uh, as I mentioned when we were talking later in our CV discussion uh, on Summit, we underestimated the amount of changes and work needed uh, on CV and some of the things got delayed. So we, uh, I think I announced this change uh, on Anchors Away LA in America, and uh, we, we wanted to do it earlier, but yeah. we need to <coughs> wait, wait a bit here. Yeah, okay, so I think Flamo's turn, right? Or nope, oh, okay, Three sorry. Three 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 Three. Do, don't let the mic go. That's right, that's right. So I'm gonna kind of piggyback on what Flamo was asking a minute ago, right? We've got all these new tier nine and 10 premiums coming into the game. It's starting to, it, it's kind of been this way for a while, but I think it's starting to feel worse. The, the tier eight matchmaking is really starting to get kind of rough. I know a lot of older ships like Hipper and Mogami, they don't, they don't feel very good. You guys have maintained your position the whole time. Plus two, minus two matchmaking is the way to go for the queue times you want to maintain. So I guess kind of my question is, is there anything that can be done, anything on the horizon, or is there any conversations going on about what we can do? I'm really kind of talking about tier eight here because I feel like being like, I've been the lone tier eight cruiser in a, a, a ship full of tier, uh, a match full of tier 10 ships, and that feels awful. So is there something that is being considered, talked about, anything? It's not just like conversation going on, it's development going on and a lot of, uh, maybe cursing and heated discussion going on <laughs> be, be, because because it's it is a problem for us we like, we share this problem with players we don't, don't deny that uh, obviously mathematically when uh, most of your audience progresses uh, and when they can reliably play on tier 10 without farming on tier 8 obviously this tier will be overpopulated at the same time we don't want to uh, like get this from people they lo uh, most of our audience loves to be there on the other hand, we don't want lower tiers to be relevant because there are ships there, we spend time on them, they're good ships, interesting uh, and mostly historical. So what we want to do right now is, uh, uh, and what we're doing, we are working on a couple of matchmaking improvements. Uh, they, they, uh, they should address, uh, first of all, the frequency of, uh, like the distribution of, of your battle tiers when you play uh, on lower tier ships, like not, not lower, medium, like eight. For example, how often will you find yourself in tier 10 battle, in tier 9 battle, in tier 8 battle? 
uh, is one thing, and what? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, may, may, maybe, maybe, like I'm saying something yeah. wrong, but yeah. And the other thing is, uh, tier ten battle for tier eight is not that bad, if you are not the like only one tier eight. If it's uh, like uh, several tier ten ships, like a couple of them, and the rest are nine eight, it's one thing. If you are mostly the only one tier eight and everybody else is tier ten, it's much more painful. So this is the second line of work, and uh, despite of like mathematic, we are mathematically not able to just even it out because a lot of players do play on tier ten. We have some ideas, and uh, we also know that some players suggest uh, to m introduce more uh, like mono tier battles where tier ten just got sucked up in the tier ten battle only. Uh, this is what we want to do, but very carefully, and we want to control the amount of such battles, because honestly, from our experience and research, uh, honestly, people who play tier tens they want to see some lower tier ships from time to <laughs> time because <laughs> be because they progress to the ships, mm -hmm. and the, our game is uh, largely our meta game is about progression. You want to to be able to do it, so changes are coming. They're co they're important for us. We're working on them. Uh, no confirmation right now. But I really hope that pretty soon you will hear more news from us. And I'm sorry for taking so long with this. I know this uh, is needed change. It's not easy to do, unfortunately. Okay. Did you want to finally? Yeah. Whoa. Okay. N not a question. Please no Slava. <laughs> <laughs> Please no Slava. But uh, where were we? Uh, yeah, I was actually going to piggyback on an earlier thing where you mentioned Kutuzov and Irian. Obviously, Irian works without smoke, like a Kutuzov. Have you considered just removing the smoke from Smolensk? Mm. Right now, actually, like uh, it was uh, in there from the fir first uh, balancing, and uh, looking at the performance of the Smolensk, I I actually believe that uh, if we remove the smokes from the Smolensk, it will be just plain garbage. Okay. 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 <coughs> okay, here's a question. If you think the Smolensk will be straight up garbage, then explain to me why, in your mind, Colbert works. Because Colbert has no smoke and it plays essentially the same role, the rapid fire HE spam. Smolensk, and you know, you can play it the same style, hi hiding behind an island, hopping from island to island, without the utilization of smoke. And you're playing similar ro like roles in that regard. So why is it that Colbert works and Colbert doesn't even have Torbs, but Smolensk cannot? Um, the uh, like the ballistics is like as you know uh, it works in both ways. And for Colbert, uh, uh, firing behind the from the islands is uh, easier than on the Smolensk. This first thing. Second thing, um, as you've uh, probably noticed uh, in the dev blog. We're buffing the small length, so it could. Uh, oh, sorry. Oh, oh God. God. No, no, no. Let's go. no, no, no. My no. drop. No, no. Please no. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go. The small length was nerfed. The Colbert was buffed. Uh. Um, yeah, and uh, like with the uh, Colbert, it's actually more difficult uh, to fit into this playstyle, especially because it doesn't have a smoke, and we don't want to give it smoke. But it also has like uh, the French. Uh, Speed boost that uh, helps it uh, uh, him to like uh, mm, get into the uh, better positions faster, as well as the Colbert has a lot more DPM in this moment. Who is next? You are. Uh, what? No. no. I've asked my. I, I asked the things oh. I, I was <laughs> listed. I, I'm going off script already. Me too. I'm asking. Yes. As, as soon as our CC go off script, they start just saying no Slava, no Slava, no Slava. <laughs> 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 That's okay. So they talk about new ships. I talk about old ships. Uh, so this this time the, the the question is about the model, the modeling of the old ships. It's uh, I see. Uh, we saw the Yamato is just recently get remodeled. Yeah, rework uh, and uh, how long? Uh, I mean, how how is the cycle working for the old ships to get remote? Uh, because like, as a Montana, Montana guy, <laughs> <laughs> as a Montana guy, Montana has a very I think serious problem uh, of the collision model on the I think uh, between the the bridge and the third tyrant. If you ram it, you can just get stuck into it. So. 
think, two, two, two components of the problem here. Uh, first is uh, sometimes uh, after several years after we worked on ship, and as you learned from uh, our presentations today, sometimes we model ship uh, like literally a year in advance or even more uh, before the, it's released to the public. Uh, sometimes years after we already model the ship, we suddenly get access while doing research around the world to some new references to more precise blueprints and so on and so forth. It's the first reason to upgrade the ship model. The second is that like we progress as like as a technology, as team, as professionals, and our artists progress as well. Sometimes they can just do better job with time of representing the ship. But uh, we also have flow of a huge pipeline for lines, for new lines, for new ships. So whenever we can squeeze in the remodel, we do it. We did it with Yamato. We had, as far as I remember, we had new reference. Uh, we had, and it's a it's really iconic ship. We wanted to do it. Uh, I honestly don't remember what ship, but I, I talked with our artists lately and they have some candidate for next remodeling. I just cannot announce it to you honestly, I don't remember, but it's not Montana, sorry. Oh. But they <laughs> but they have they have they have one. And whenever we have resources and time we'll try to squeeze it. Uh, because yes, it's important to us. It's a visual upgrade, it's a better historical model, like no one is against it. But we don't have, uh, we, we cannot dedicate like the whole pipeline to it, but we'll try to do it uh, as with many ships as possible. Okay, thank you. Um, are you aware, and this is more of an awareness thing, um, that ramming seems to have gone a little weird lately? Um, because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because there's, there was this one particular battle, and it was very memorable because. I was 100% sure that I was going to execute this move, I was going to ram this enemy battleship, take him out of this cap, and we would, you know, be able to secure this cap. The enemy battleship, who also knew me, knew that he wasn't going to get the advantage on me. So he was like, I'm going to go take you out in the ram. So we we're both absolutely dead set on this ram. He hits me, and somehow I blow up, and he survives, but then I initially had more HP, and I'm in a battleship and him too. It was just really weird. And, and I was asking him, do you have ramming flag? He's like, do you have ramming flag? Like, no, everything was just... No, you have ramming flag. Yeah, no, <laughs> neither was it. it was very strange. It was like, I'm, I'm just wondering, like, did something happen to ram mechanics that we're not aware of and that, like, you know... Mm. I think I've heard something about it uh, that... Uh, I'm not sure... Um, th I know that there was some bug uh, with it, um, um, but... I'm not sure whether we already fixed it or the we are like we are obviously planning to fix it, but I can't say the we we don't have the dashboard in our heads yeah. unfortunately, and uh, a lot of things going on at the same time. But uh, I mean, it, we will follow up on this question yeah. for sure. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I I have a specific game balance question. Oh, so specific. Now. Not talking to you right now. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Um, this is, this is one that's near and dear to my heart because I'm a big fan of the, the German heavy cruisers, right? The high end of that line, hipper on up. When you get to those ships, let me back up. Pre-8-0, pre in pre-rework, pre-AA mechanic changes. Those ships had pretty solid AA. It wasn't best in tier, but it was solid. It still remains solid, but it has a shorter AA range than every other like cruiser in the tier. And in some cases, the destroyers have a larger AA radius than those cruisers. Why, why was that decided? Like, why were the German cruisers artificially capped at, at that 5.2 kilometer AA radius? Is there, is there a reason? Is there a rationale? Is it technical? Is it historical? Is it spreadsheet? Is it, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, seriously, yeah, like, yeah. what's the, I'm just curious. Um, if I remember correctly, the, it was uh, be because the, uh, initially 105 millimeter guns, uh, had uh, less um, firing distance than the mm -hmm. other ones. And uh, I guess the German cruisers just, uh, they, they, they kind of suffered from the system where your medium aura, which on German cruisers was uh, larger mm -hmm. than the uh, far aura, now is contained uh, in uh, like uh, this radius. Mm -hmm. And thus, uh, that's why the um, far aura is uh, 5.2 because right. like it was based on the um, 105 millimeter guns which right. were already short yeah right. that's okay. that's why and yeah. so spreadsheet 
as a as yeah. a as a bomber. Yeah, basically. Bomber. Okay, fair enough. I'll 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 follow that one up later. Anybody else? How are we going through this? Uh, I'm already off script. I'm already <laughs> off script. So <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I've I've been going off script for a okay. while. So so I mean I, I'm gonna ask it. Here we go, Dylan. Uh, another CV question. Okay. Yeah. Um. So like NAU, I'm not sure about uh, our like Russian server. Um. Like one CV per team, please. Right. Like. Mm. Why hasn't that been done yet, right? Because this is something that NA, like, when you see two CVs per side, you're just like, I'm gonna break my monitor now, just gonna punch it, you know, I'm gonna destroy my monitor. Okay, I have a nice one, but I'm not gonna do that. So no, what's going on We're there? not big fans of two CV matches in general ourselves. The matchmaking is usually tightly connected with population. Uh, we introduced soft cap a uh, few updates uh, earlier for tier 10 battles. This update 0 at 5, we're introducing soft cap for tier 8. Uh, battles uh, whenever we can. I don't know if it's needed honestly for tier uh, six and four. I don't. I, yeah. don't I, I don't think it's like it's even needed, but it's not feasible right now because of the amount of carriers. And I just want to remind you that unfortunately it's not about like okay carrier players they can wait a bit right, but it's not it doesn't work like just like this. I, if we just we have uh, these uh, queue limits and if we uh, introduce the hard cap which will, w uh, let's just imagine the graphs, uh, just try to visualize the graph of uh, CV players entering battle queue. And if we introduce uh, the hard cap, which is below the average like amount of these players, uh, if, if, if the only the, the, top, the top spikes will be cut off, it's fine because they will be just spread evenly within the gaps, it's, it works. But if we uh, overdo it, uh, uh, matchmaker won't be able to process these players and it will result in incomplete battles. And if we create incomplete battles with one carrier per side, they still will be very bad because like five versus five, one carrier. I'm yeah. not sure what's better because carrier will just have five <laughs> ships to interact with. So uh, we will try to, to work on these caps, but uh, it, it, it depends on population. Right now, population has decreased significantly since the CV rework release. It's stabilizing and we'll keep an eye on this. Yeah, just quick follow-up. Yeah, just quick follow-up. Oh, um, like, are there any, for example, regional considerations that you guys have to make as well? Because, I mean, a lot of players, they don't r realize that you guys are, like, you know, obviously dealing with four different regions and four different player bases. And, like, does that impact your decisions as well? It kind of impacts our decision-making because uh, I don't think Ivan, for example, is a big fan of sustaining four game builds for four regions <laughs> <laughs> for, for many reasons, including the fact that we have cross-realm activities uh, nowadays. Uh, so uh, I don't want to blame anyway. <laughs> I'm not blaming anyone, but from in terms of CV popularity, Asia, C. CV popularity, yeah. uh, like, Asia is uh, distinguished because uh, on some tiers they have maybe 70% more, if I, if I remember correctly, carriers, as, uh, especially uh, at rework launch, like they, they, the spike was biggest. And uh, we did have to wait a bit for Asian population uh, of carriers to stabilize, for example, to introduce tier 10 cap. While, uh, while Russian server has the lowest CV population mostly, uh, we could have introduced it a bit earlier, but we had to wait for other servers to follow. So yeah, there are regional considerations, and we have to like we have to make the one game for our four uh, servers equally. Okay, well, since we're discussing carriers here uh, again, uh, yeah, how do you feel about the carrier implementation in ranked? Do you feel it was a success? For me, uh, personally, I didn't have time to like progress. Uh, really to highest ranks because uh, most of the time I was uh, in our NA office doing some work. But uh, honestly, I, I played like two battles on carrier and uh, I also uh, switched to destroyers and battleships. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, I just felt that uh, like I'm having, I'm having some consistent results, but like it, it, was, not, it was not rewarding for me. But we, we, I think Ivan can elaborate in terms of uh, win rate of carriers in ranked yeah. and XP. Because it's, it's what the whole... Uh, you are aware of saving stars and Yes, carriers. that's yeah. what I want to elaborate, yeah. yeah. Um, when we look at the uh, stats of the top guys uh, within the ranked, like uh, the guys who have the best win rate at ranked one or the amount of battles that they need to come to the... Um, the first uh, place to rank out, basically. Yeah, the first place to rank out. Uh, 
we see like a disparity. Um, the win rate of the carriers uh, are it's it's not that uh, it's uh, lower than uh, the best players of the other um, classes, but uh, the amount of battle it takes to rank out on the carriers is uh, still uh, v like it's less than the other classes and we believe that it, this is due to the uh, XP um, because carriers are now now uh, get more rewards in XP than uh, the other classes and I believe we like, intend to uh, work on that so, so yeah. that uh, ranking out uh, like there won't be a dominant strategy like pick a carrier and rank out faster. Yeah, and this will obviously affect saving star system. Yeah, because uh, many carrier players have told me that they just focus on doing damage from the start. If their team wins, they win. If their team loses, they keep a star. Win-win. Obviously, that's not a good situation. And uh, I think if we if we readdress XP, also with all these changes to AA coming, uh, carriers will have a harder time to earn XP because the obviously the battle efficiency will drop some somewhat. And yeah, we need to balance it out because we obviously we don't want uh, one class to be like the easiest, perfect uh, uh, way to rank out. It's just dumb. Of course, we'll address it. How's our time? We still have time? Yes, we have like 20 minutes. Okay, so well, uh, yeah. ah, okay, fine. Uh -huh. Since we're talking about ranked, <laughs> which is supposed to be the competitive mode. A step to competitive mode. Yes, well, uh -huh. we're still we're a step. <laughs> why oh why add rental ships and why oh why deny these rental ships from equipping camo? Oh. Yeah, I mean it, the players playing rental ships, they're already a step below. They probably don't have a good cap then, they probably don't have the pimped out flags and everything. And now you deny them some concealment. Not a big deal on a battleship, but on a, but on a rental DD, it's murder. I'm absolutely sure Ivan wants to answer this. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this kind of like, uh, as you probably know, we had rentals before in clan battles, and um, we've seen that this concept worked fine uh, within the uh, clan battles. A, in a, our uh, idea, like uh, more competitive mode than the rank in battles, and uh, like thus, uh, when we introduced it to the rank in battles without the camo, the concept stayed the same. And um, like par part of it that we still want the people to want the uh, original tier 10. The real tier 10. Yeah, the, the real tier 10. Uh, that's also part of the reason that they have this, uh, I'm not sure how it's called, but. Uh, brackets around. Brackets, it. yeah. Um, in the name, uh, so that, yeah, players will want, they like try it, and they want the, sh the same uh, ship, but slightly better. And uh, like, to be honest, yeah. On destroyers, it could be um, more painful, and it um, very may very well. Kind of ah. <laughs> 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 uh, and obviously, obviously, we do understand that uh, in terms of ranked versus clan, uh, the idea is perceived differently. Because yeah, we absolutely understand that in clan battles, uh, like your team is responsible for it. If you it's, if it's a choice of your team of taking this uh, like uh, badly concealed shimakaze, fine. In ranked, I know it, it can piss people off because they not, not don't get to choose to play with this guy, and they feel, of course, when we have some disparity like this, people always will attribute this, even even if it's not the case in this exact battle, people will always attribute this disadvantage to this guy. So we are aware of this sentiment. Uh, we wanted to check out the idea. We wanted to weigh uh, weight like the uh, benefits of uh, the activity of these players. We wanted to see who will use these rentals versus uh, like what the effects would be. I, d I can't promise you that it will, the idea will just die, but we will heavily uh, consider this criticism and we believe it's deserved. Okay, another quick question regarding this, which has been raised multiple times by people, is will we be able to hide these ships from our ports? I don't really need copies of every tier 10 ship I own. Like, I mean, technical debt probably, mostly. Yeah. Uh, of expanding the filter, I'm not sure if there are any reasons not to, but just for just to, just not to be fired after this interview, I am not going to promise it to you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. I'll, I'll drop I'll drop into UI guys and mm. I'll I'll ask them just in case. But yeah, sure. Okay. But you only got one job. Mm. 
Yes. I yeah. think. Uh, uh, so uh, so uh, let, let's discuss Montana performance and rent. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, so the streaming stars system is building on the experience earned, right? And uh, Actually, if you really do quite a lot of team play, like supporting your teammates, like doing sporting or, or giving smoke, that actually hurts you, your, your, your damage or hurts your experience earned. So how can you, I mean, you're playing uh, not selfishly, but you get less and you, if, if your team lose and you lost star, so there's it's no chance for this kind of a place there to like save star actually. So do you like thinking of like uh, relo uh, reallocating more uh, EXP to like sporting? It's like I think questions from two, two, two points of view. The value of team activities in XP earnings and the star saving mechanics. And uh, uh, our if, if unless you want to address this. No, he <laughs> doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to. <laughs> in, in, in our, actually, uh, I, I remember a lot about this topic because uh, I did participate uh, when we did Economy Tweaks. Uh, because if you, if you remember, at some point we didn't even have this teamwork activities counting in the into economy at all. So when we were introducing them into the economy to, make, to, make to reward players for it, we really wanted to them to have weight, but still we agreed, after like lengthy discussions, we agreed that uh, ship damaging and capping still will be two main activities for everything, mm -hmm. uh, because this is what works in most cases, th this is what works for most players, this is what most players want to feel rewarded for. Uh, so yeah, it's not like we're going to like instantly increase the, for example, uh, value of uh, spotting damage x5 for, for overall XP calculation. But as for star saving me mechanics, uh, correct me if I'm being too dumb because uh, I really don't remember things anymore from alpha test and from uh, early uh, our early years, but I'm pretty sure that rank battles mode launched without, without star saving mechanics. Yeah, sure. And actually we had to, uh, it's, it's, it's really funny because uh, I remember that we added this mechanics kind of to meet the community demand, yeah. to, have the, to have something, and we chose the XP the raw XP as not perfect, but kind of workable metrics because all of the other metrics, uh, they are even more different uh, between classes, like absolute damage, frags, uh, spotting, th all of these are even more different. And we know that it's not perfect, as for example, uh, Ivan told you about carriers. Uh, we have this like disparity, but it's probably the best we can offer so far. And we really don't, uh, we can work with uh, how ships earn XP, a bit if they are over the top, but probably we're not changing the star saving mechanics. It works, and yeah. It's okay, so so just uh, I read uh, some of uh, idea. It's like instead of uh, the losing team, the first first place in the losing team saves the star. You give like the first uh, place of the winning team two stars. I think um, mm, it would just make the uh, progression. the progression for a skilled guy super fast. So, so it will be not like. Um, I guess 50 to like 70, 80 battles, uh, it will be even less. So, so we, I guess, we don't want to do that. Mm, I have a suggestion for you. Let's make it so that uh, the player who fielded Montana <laughs> saves a star. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to do this. Uh, okay. Following up on his question, uh, elaborating it a bit, I mean, the current way you earn base XP is kind of stupid. It's damage, damage, damage and everything else seems to have such a such a small role. Mm. I mean, uh, you can, uh, playing a DD, you can spot, you can push, you can cap, you can defend your caps, you can spot the enemy DDs getting killed, and like, you can have a huge impact on the game. And then that conqueror, Yamato, sat on the back line the entire game, just farming damage. He's the one who gets the top XP. It's, it's not, uh, like, there are situations like this, it's not that easy because in economy we count uh, relative damage not absolute damage, so for example, if, uh, if you farm uh, huge numbers uh, on battleships, mm -hmm. uh, that's fine, but if you contest a cap and you just manage to kill off like a DD, it will still be like 1.0 in the economy for you, it will, you will be rewarded for that, and also capping has uh, quite, uh, like I don't remember coefficients, but capping does have uh, significant coefficients, honestly. But yes, damage, like if we just rank all activities one by one, damage will be the first. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's number one. Re but, but it's relative damage. 
Yeah, but have you considered perhaps reward rewarding other aspects of battleship play? For example, lower the damage a bit, raise the potential damage a bit, and Which encourage more active, basically better gameplay. I wish uh, I wish Andrew, who who designed this, yeah. was here. I I will answer very carefully because I don't want to misinform you. I just tell you what I uh, like remember one hundred percent, and the rest we can follow up later. So uh, when we tweak the economical settings, I think each class uh, has different uh, coefficients assigned yeah. to uh, to these support activities. So for example, we uh, I think the battleships they do have increased uh, multiplier for tanking. While, uh, of course, we don't, we cannot expect uh, like carrier or even DD to tank the same amount of damage usually, uh, even even though they can uh, do it sometimes. But <laughs> still, yeah. But st still, still, I mean, still, uh, we do have this uh, thing that each class has uh, like capping damage, and then we have some activities uh, with different multipliers depending on what the class role is overall. If you remember anything better than me, just please. No, please I, add. I'm not sure. Yes. Are you considered showing this on the scoreboard to encourage better gameplay? Uh, we uh, kind of we discussed it many times uh, whether we should break down the exact amount of uh, XP, for example, earned for exact action as it's done in some games. Uh, we're still not doing this, uh, partly uh, because of the reason that uh, not only we have uh, like I wanted to say shitload, but it's a bad word, but I said it anyway. Sorry. Uh, a lot of m different multipliers inside. We also have this mechanic, w which we mention sometimes that uh, e even after after the game is finished, uh, there is still some multipliers being applied uh, to different ranking players. And the idea is that, so, uh, okay, I'll try to explain this. So the idea is that when uh, one player did extremely well, extremely well, uh, quite often it means that some of the less performing players at least served as like damage pinatas for him, <laughs> so that the enemy concentrated on <laughs> him. So we also addition like the system additionally rewards them a bit. Uh, so it's not it's it's not linear. Like yeah. it's it's much more complicated. And honestly, we I would love to see honestly more feedback, uh, but it's just really difficult difficult to explain. So so far we concentrated on ribbons and achievements as the measurement of your. Like of your actions in battles, and unfortunately, I don't see this aspect of the game uh, changing anytime soon. Okay, I'll stop hogging the mic. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, because it's my turn to hog yeah. the mic, right? <laughs> yeah, because I'm sitting here going, man, I got a couple of questions, and now I'm just thinking out more. But yeah, just to, just to just to understand, we have like uh, seven minutes. Okay, so, I yeah. will a ask two questions then, I guess. The first one is down at tier four when the there's a lot of ships that are just starting to run into carriers for the first time. Um, some of those ships basically have like a dude with a pistol on their decks. You know, like that's what they pretty much got for AA, right? Um, and, s you know, when CVs come to attack, a lot of them, you know, those ships don't really are able to do much. But at the same time, tier four CVs are also kind of pathetic at times, you know? Um, so are you guys happy with the state of sort of tier four CV versus surface ship interaction? And so are you happy with that right now? Mm, yeah, basically, yeah, because the tier eight CVs uh, very gently, uh, like um, y you can, uh, you can start playing carriers in a very like safe environment for you because uh, the change of uh, tempo of gameplay on the carriers is huge, and um, we want uh, to fo that the player on tier four carrier will focus mainly on like um, playing at this new tempo uh, for him. Um, so and overall, yeah, we're kind of. And, and honest, honestly, like I see this t tier four and uh, lower tiers as kind of kindergarten for for the players, and it's really hard to appreciate uh, for for us, and especially for you because you have like a huge amount of games under the belt. And even I, when when I sometimes want to play uh, some very balanced tier four ships like Nikolai, <laughs> no, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> <laughs> even, even, even other, uh, no, seriously, like uh, when I want to go down uh, the tech tree and play something. I sometimes find, okay, these games are boring on the one hand, like, oh, maybe we should do the gameplay more dynamic, more fun. But then uh, I, I really worked share a lot of time on our game conventions where we presented the game. And one thing I really noticed that when you have new people coming to the stand uh, to play the game for the first time uh, and they play lower tiers, they had so many things to figure out. And honestly, uh, like pumping more action, more interactions, uh, more opportunities, 
uh, and uh, all of this stuff into low tier gameplay is going to hurt these players a lot because all of us sometimes tend to forget that you have a lot of knowledge on the game. You basically, uh, it's like with language, you need to learn the phonetics first and then you can freely speak to learn the grammar right. to build on this and tier four gameplay is like your phonetics. You learn very basic stuff okay. and then it gets complicated. So we don't want to, like, to, to boost it uh, in terms of all, all of this intensity. Right, so now going into sort of the presentation of information, right? Um, there's always been sort of this discussion between, I think, uh, CCs and devs and things like that where we're talking about, I wish you guys would allow like more information to be displayed in port. So for example, the magical dispersion value is always like, this is one number, right? Um, have you ever thought about creating sort of like a, like a, you know, like a spreadsheet? Not a spreadsheet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not a spreadsheet, not a spreadsheet. Like, like, a kind of a, like sort of like an animation where like, you know, you, you hold the mouse and then you, you know, you hold it close at like, you know, very close ranges, you see a dispersion ellipse. And then as you're able to move out, like, you know, and you can put like a ship in it to give sort of scale or size or whatever. And then as, you know, you kind of go out, you see the changes in the circle. And, you know, within, of course, the ship that you are, you know, I guess putting there for scale. Have you ever thought about something like yeah. that? Well, I don't well, know. well m m we uh, the, the the best solution here would be probably to kidnap April White Mouse to do it for <laughs> us. Uh, so our position here is that uh, we don't like hide values. Uh, I think maybe ninety nine percent of relevant stats uh, can be data mined. They are in the client. They many of them are in the wiki. We always like I if you guys come to a CC Discord and ask what's the value, what's the magic number for this ship? We usually just give you information from the from the ship logs. It's fine for us. The problem here is w when we get to discuss how to add information to vanilla client, it gets complicated because we have UI team which uh, ask ask really relevant question. First of all, how we make this information really usable usable f by the majority of players, as you suggested, like not uh, saying the sigma is. 2.0 is not going to teach anything because people need to need a lot of context to understand what it is and to compare it with other uh, parameters, with ellipse uh, size, with number of barrels and with other ships. And uh, after this it gets complicated because, okay, you want to have some animated like dispersion thing. It's a lot of resources and we cannot justify uh, working so much on something to vanilla client which still on the handful of players will use. We want to enhance the port information. Uh, it, it, it really gets slow. I think we added AC penetration not yeah. that long time yeah, ago. Yeah, we did add it. And probably we will add some more information, but it's not it's not the question of us like saying, no, we don't want to do it. It's just how we implement it in good quality to be useful and do we have resources for it. Yeah, but still, yeah, but still we, we, we are open to share this data. We share a lot of uh, hidden stats in DevBlock. We, uh, we do maintain Wiki. And like we, we want to we want players to f to be able to find this information, but sometimes you get to to leave it to third party websites, and it's fine. It works like this in many many games, like uh, a lot of games, even a lot of very competitive games, or like with even with some esports, they don't have all this information in client, but they have a lot of tools for hardcore gamers to use. I think it's like ha having this compromise. Um, uh, sorry, l last question, okay? Okay, right. sure, oh. good. All right, all right. So. Um, in a few months-ish or so, the game will be four years old out of official release. Yay! Yay! Um, but we're still kind of all suffering under the... Ple sorry, please don't say but after this. <laughs> <laughs> In some time, I want the game to be four years no, 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 old. No, no. That, that, no that, but... Happen. But what I'm getting at is we're all still kind of... Uh, the, the, the chat system is where I'm going, right? The chat and the friend system has seen very little work, update, improvement and I think could use a little love. So do you guys have anything planned on the horizon that's coming to improve that system? Uh, like I'm really sorry to, to answer it like this, but nah, no, uh, because okay. this dude is uh, about balancing and okay. ships, and I'm about general things and uh, game progression. I don't know, Okay, honestly. that's fine. I, I'm asking yeah. the wrong people. That's not a problem. Because that was a short question. Am I allowed one more? No. Chat, chat, chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's, let's <laughs> okay, okay. One, sure. Uh, so as, as the game has aged and as we've gotten more ship lines and more nations and all that, um, there, at least sometimes when I see it, there's like sort of a, it's almost like there's not enough stuff to kind of make new flavors of things. Now I know from the most recent dev blog post about Supertest, there's SAP that's supposed to be kind of a new thing, a new mechanic. 
Um, has the World of Warships team thought about um, creating things like in tanks? There's you know how there's that uh, um, siege mode, and then there's like you know that kind of stuff. Like you know, for of course, if you have to translate it to ships, it'll be like uh, thermodynamics on the barrel or things like that. You know, like ha has any of these sort of more bizarre concept ideas been thought of as a new way to create some kind of interesting flavor to different ships? You wouldn't believe how many bizarre ideas <laughs> is, <laughs> is in this head, but I don't think we can share anything. Uh, yeah, well on we can share only the, uh, what, what's in okay. the dev blog, and you could probably see that there were some quite new mechanics, quite fresh, and we're like looking how to expand our horizons. Could we ask about discarded ideas, like things that you guys like Thought of uh, thought about, and then we're like, no, nah, we're not. No. Yeah. So, so, so one day we have an idea. Let's introduce <laughs> ASAP shells and give each player a credit card reader. And each time you want to fire this shell, you need to like <laughs> pay us <laughs> pay us five dollars. But when we we just execute this guys on, on on site and yeah, and send the remains to Gulag. <laughs> You know, if you make that system for verbal reports, like it tells, <laughs> <laughs> tells your opponents what you think of them every time you swipe, you'll make a fortune. Ple please, ban oh, yes. please ban this guy for. Yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, guys, thank you for questions. I'm really happy thank that we had time. Thank you. Time. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank thank you. you. Thank Subscribe you. to Flamel. <laughs> Subscribe to all of these guys. Uh, <laughs> wow, follow them. <laughs> uh, I know. Click the bell. Uh, donate. Uh, do <laughs> everything. Yeah, because like this, yeah. give me your house. This, 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 this guy is amazing. Buy them a house, a car, and uh, make them happy. And also, thank you for watching, guys. Uh, see you soon. Have a good one. See you guys.